In this problem, we're going to solve this differential equation. This differential equation is a Bernoulli differential equation, and you can tell by looking at this y to a power here. In general, a Bernoulli differential equation looks like this. dy dx plus p of x times y equals f of x, and then you have this y to a power, so y to the n. Here n is not 0 and n is not 1. If it's 0 or 1, uh, it ends up becoming a linear DE. So our problem doesn't necessarily look like this yet. So a good first step would be to write it in this form. This is called the standard form. So we'll start by distributing the y. So dy dx is equal to so distributing the y, we'll add the exponents. That will give us x, y to the 8th, because 1 plus 7 is 8, minus y. We're almost there. We just have to add the y to both sides. So let's do that. That will put us at dy dx plus y equals xy to the 8th. OK, now it's in what's called standard form. The next step in solving a Bernoulli differential equation is to identify n. So in this case, n is equal to 8. And then you make a substitution. So the formula is always u equals y to the 1 minus n. So that means u is equal to y to the 1 minus 8, which is equal to y to the negative 7. I'm going to write it again. U is equal to y to the negative 7. Once you have this, you want to solve for y. So to do that, you can raise both sides to the negative 1 7th power. I'm going to write it again down here and show that work, just so you see it. So this is y to the negative 7. And we're raising it to the negative 1 7th power. So this is u to the negative 1 over 7. And now you multiply the negative 1 7th times the negative 7, and that gives you y. I'm going to go ahead and come over here and write it again. y equals u to the negative 1 over 7. This is important, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in a box. We're going to need this in a minute. The next step is to compute the derivative of y with respect to x. Before we do that, we have to realize that y is the solution to this differential equation. So y is actually a function of x because y, uh, because, sorry, u, yeah, y is actually a function of x. u is equal to this, so u is also a function of x. So when we take the derivative, we have to use the chain rule. So dy dx. So again, y is a function of x, u is equal to y to the negative 7, so u is a function of x. So you bring down the negative 1 7th, leave the inside untouched. Negative 1 7th minus 1 is negative 1 7th minus 7 7 which is negative 8 7 times the derivative of the inside du dx. This is super key, so this step is important. You always get a du dx here when you compute dy dx. Again, y is the solution to the de, so y is a function of x. But u is equal to y to the negative 7, so u is equal to a function of x. So when you take the derivative, you do have to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is du dx. The next step is to carefully substitute everything into our de. So dy dx is this. We put it in a box, so I'll write it here. So negative 1 7th u to the negative 8 sevenths, and then we have du dx plus y, that's also in a convenient box, u to the negative 1 seventh, that's equal to x, and then y to the 8th power. So we're raising this to the 8th power, so when you do that, what happens is you multiply the exponents, so you get u to the negative 8 sevenths. So this is u to the negative 8 sevenths. Okay. The next step is to solve this. <laughs> so this is actually linear, so we have to make this piece of 1. 
So the natural thing to think about is to divide by this. However, there is an easier way. So the way I do it is I write down what I'm going to do. So I want to make this a 1. So to get rid of the negative 1 sevenths, we have to multiply by negative 7, right? That will get rid of the negative 1 sevenths. And to get rid of u to the negative 8 sevenths, you can multiply by u to the 8 sevenths. Because when you multiply these, you end up adding the exponents, and so you get u to the 0. So that's the key. So now let's go ahead and perform the multiplication. Again, this times this. Well, the 7s will cancel, the negatives will cancel. u to the 8 sevenths times u to the negative 8 sevenths is going to be u to the 0. So we're just going to get du dx, which was the whole point. Beautiful stuff. Here we're going to get negative 7, and this is really cool. We have u to the 8 sevenths times u to the negative 1 sevenths. So 8 sevenths plus negative 1 sevenths is 7 sevenths, which is 1. So we get u to the 1. If you don't get a 1 here, that means you did it wrong. Equals negative 7x. The u's completely go away in this case because you have u to the 8 sevenths times this, and you add the exponents, and so you get u to the 0, which is 1. At this point, it's linear. And so recall that when you're solving linear DEs, the next step is to find what's called the integrating factor. So big P is whatever is in front of your U, and you find your integrating factor, which is mu of X, and that's equal to E to the integral of big P DX. So that's equal to E to the integral of negative seven DX, which is E to the negative seven X. Don't worry about the plus C. So your integrating factor is e to the negative 7x. This is the method of solving a linear differential equation. So the substitution that you make at the beginning of the problem turns the Bernoulli differential equation into a linear differential equation. And then you apply that method to finish the problem. Okay, now we're going to multiply everything by our integrating factor. So it'll be e to the negative 7x du dx minus 7e to the negative 7x times u equals negative 7x e to the negative 7x. Okay, so that's always the next step. So you compute your integrating factor, multiply by it, and this next step is absolutely critical. So this always will magically become, so this entire left-hand side is always going to be your integrating factor which in this case is e to the negative 7x, times the function you're solving for. So we're trying to find u, so we put a u here. Normally you have a y, but in this problem we have a u now, right, because we have u. And then we have to, uh, we still have this here. This is still here. You can check this. In fact, let's do that. So recall that if you have f times g and you take the derivative, Thinking of f as the first function and g as the second function, it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So in this case, taking the derivative of e to the negative 7x, well, that's e to the negative 7x times the derivative of the inside, so negative 7. So that's here, right? That's this piece here. That's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, right, du dx. So it does actually check. The next step is to integrate. So I'm just going to write integrate. When you integrate the left-hand side, it's always really easy. The ddx just goes away. And this piece here is going to be interesting because we get to use a nice integration technique. So to do this integral on the right-hand side, we can use integration by parts, but Let's use a faster method of integration, a method called tabular integration. So tabular integration works whenever, after repeated differentiation, uh, one of the terms is eventually 0. So in this case, negative 7x, after repeated differentiation, is eventually 0. The other requirement is that we can repeatedly integrate the second factor. So it works in this case. So you write down the piece you're going to differentiate, and then you write down the piece you're going to integrate. And then you just start differentiating. Okay, so the derivative of negative 7x is negative 7. The derivative of negative 7 is 0. Then we integrate e to the negative 7x. 
So to do that, you just keep dividing by negative 7. So it's negative 1 7th e to the negative 7x. Doing it again, we get 1 over 49 e to the negative 7x. So you pick one to differentiate, and it has to be 0 eventually. You pick one to integrate, and then you write plus minus plus. You always start by writing plus first. And then you draw arrows, boom, boom, and then you follow the arrows and you're done. It's awesome. So we have, let me switch colors here, e to the negative 7x, u is equal to, following the first arrow here, so negative and negative is positive, so we're going to get x, e to the negative 7x, and then, oh, this is also positive, because negative and negative is positive, see, negative and negative is positive, so it'll be 7 over 49, so 1 7th e to the negative 7x. And let's not forget our plus c. To make this pretty and clean, we can divide everything by e to the negative 7x. So we'll have u equals x plus 1 7th. Wow, look at that. Gone, gone, gone. And then we have plus c over e to the negative 7x. What a beautiful answer. Almost done. Uh, I forgot what u was. I have to scroll up to see u was y to the negative 7. There it is, right there. So let's come back down and write that in. So this is y to the negative 7 equals x plus 1 seventh. Let's bring up this e, so it's e to the 7x. And that, my friends, would be the final answer. I can't believe this video took uh, over 11 minutes. Uh, when I started making this video, I was like, oh, I'll be done in like three minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. It takes a while to uh, to go through these problems. <laughs> um, this is a harder one. It's a harder one because um, you had to use tabular, and it just felt a little bit harder than some of the other ones that we've been doing. So uh, I hope this video uh, has been helpful in some way. Take care.